Well, hey guys, today I wanna to share with you five skincare products that yes, I am still using. I have a lot of videos on this channel along the vein of, oh, these are the best in this category, or these are my ultimate favorites. And I have a lot of skincare products that I truly love, adore, but the ones that I'm sharing with you in this video, I have just continued to repurchase over and over again. Now, one thing I haven't needed to repurchase, but I continue to use and swear by is my Sleep and Glow Omnia pillow. Now, today's video is kindly sponsored by Sleep and Glow. If you have been here for any number of years, you know they're one of my longest running sponsors of this channel and I'm really grateful to continue to be able to work with them. I know you guys love this pillow as much as I do because I've gotten so much positive feedback from you all over the years. Thank you so much for introducing me to the Sleep and Glow Omnia pillow. It has made such a difference in the way that my face looks when I wake up in the morning. It's completely gotten rid of that morning puffiness, sleep creases, and I sleep so much better. It offers such excellent neck support. And without that good neck support, I end up kind of going like this and I'll wake up with creases in the front of my neck and since sleeping with this pillow that is a non-issue for me. You may be wondering what exactly are sleep creases, sleep wrinkles. Okay so sleep wrinkles are wrinkles that show up on your face as a result of compression against in most cases a poorly supportive pillow. Contrast to wrinkles that appear with age as they relate to facial movements, sleep wrinkles are often vertical and they happen where the skin is being compressed, like the cheek, around the mouth, around the eyes, and close up to the nose. What is it about this pillow that differentiates it from any other pillow on the market? Oh, there are a ton of factors. First of all, it's made of very high quality memory foam, but the shape is really where it's at. This pillow was designed alongside orthopedist. So the shape is intended to support your head, your neck, your shoulder girdle for the optimal sleep position. This particular pillow is one that can be used if you are a back sleeper like myself, but it is also great if you are a side sleeper. And what you're gonna notice with this pillow is that it's got these concavities so that if you are a side sleeper or you happen to turn over on your side, the side concavity, it really cradles your cheek so it eliminates that compressive force so you don't wake up with sleep wrinkles or puffiness. Came to the design of this pillow, they spared no details, right down to the covering of the pillow. It's made of this high quality tensile material. The material is actually bacteriostatic. It may take you a few nights to get used to the pillow, but once you do, it's the kind of thing that you cannot sleep without. I notice, I notice the biggest difference actually when I travel and I don't have my Omnia pillow, I don't sleep as well. A lot of times I will wake up with a stiff neck and of course that morning puffiness returns. So this is a game changer for my sleep and when it comes to sleep, I will do anything to get a good night's sleep. The pillow comes with a 30 night sleep trial so if you're not completely satisfied, you can send it back and get a full refund. It also comes with a three year warranty. If you guys wanna check out the Sleep and Glow Omnia pillow, definitely take advantage of the discount code they have offered me. So sleep and Glow has never offered a discount like this but on Black Friday, if you use code Dr. Dre 15, you can save 15% site wide only on Black Friday, however. So make sure you take advantage of it. That way you can save. Trust me, this is one of my best cat beauty secret tools and get one for yourself and get one as a gift for the upcoming holidays. The other day I posted a reel about how I've been so happy with the fact that when we go to the drugstore, there are so many more options for tinted sunscreens these days in comparison to when I first started on YouTube. I mean, this year alone, I have tried and fallen in love with probably over 10 new and exciting and excellent tinted sunscreens. I find myself not really using a lot of the tinted sunscreens that I have hyped up in the past. Not because they're not good, not because they're not excellent, but because we just have so many more options these days. And a lot, a lot of times the newer options, because they're drugstore brands, they're a lot more affordable. So I've really been leaning into those a lot more this year, with the exception of a sunscreen that I repurchase over and over and over and over again. It's the Dermatology SPF 46 Universal Tint. Okay, this is a hybrid sunscreen, meaning it has zinc and then it has some organic filters. It actually has one, I believe octinoxate, but it's tinted. So the tint can offer some additional protection against visible light. So the zinc, the octinoxate, those are the active ingredients for protecting your skin against ultraviolet radiation. But then if you are prone to hyperpigmentation, the iron oxides, which give the 
focus a tent may also help in protecting you from visible light, which is a major driving factor for hyperpigmentation and melasma. The Dermatology Universal Tint has niacinamide. Speaking of looking to fade dark spots, niacinamide is a fantastic ingredient. It's an antioxidant. And the way it works for hyperpigmentation is it actually gets in the way of the spread of pigment packets from the pigment producing cells, the melanocytes, to the neighboring skin cells, the keratinocytes. And niacinamide is an antioxidant. It's anti-inflammatory. It has a track record of being helpful for redness and for helping with the health of the moisture barrier. This is a moisturizer with a broad spectrum sunscreen. Uh, it's a great option in the winter months. The tint is not overly orange too yellow, it's not too peachy, it's fragrance free. Now it does have a bit of an odd odor which some people find off-putting, but that odor doesn't linger. I like to refer to it as the pool float odor. <laughs> and honestly, I think that odor is part of why I like using it. I don't know, somehow I bonded with it. This is one I love and adore. Let me know in the comments though, what sunscreen do you find yourself using over and over again? For me, it is this one. I mean, it pretty much always makes its way into a sunscreen empties. My one thing with this is I do wish it were water resistant for days that you are mostly outdoors or doing outdoor activities, water-based sports. But for the winter time, when you need a good moisturizer with sunscreen, this is, this is one I can't recommend more strongly. Speaking of wanting to fade dark spots and hyperpigmentation, this was a 2022 skincare favorite, and I have repurchased it multiple times this year. I even tried other products similar in terms of ingredient families, product claims to this, and really could not find anything that compares. And that is May Love's Fade Away Brightening Serum. This product is a very hydrating serum that definitely can improve the overall look of skin tone. It's meant for people who are trying to improve the appearance of dark, dark spots and hyperpigmentation. When it comes to fading dark spots and hyperpigmentation, the outcomes that a person gets from a given product are going to be very dependent on that person, that individual, and the nature of their underlying hyperpigmentation. If you have hyperpigmentation that is at a deeper layer in the skin, you know, you may not get much noticeable improvement. But what is in this that targets dark spots? It has alpha arbutin, which is an ingredient that inhibits tyrosinase, which is the enzyme responsible for making pigment. It inhibits tyrosinase in a unique way in that alpha arbutin looks and is shaped very similar to L-tyrosine, which is the thing that tyrosinase works on to make pigment. Then you also have in this formula kojic acid. Now kojic acid helps to inhibit tyrosinase slightly differently. It works because it chelates copper, which is required for tyrosinase to work. So the arbutin and the kojic acid, they both work to inhibit tyrosinase activity but they do so in slightly different ways, so they're complementary. Then you have licorice root extract, which is anti-inflammatory, but specifically licorice root is thought to help improve dark spots by um, helping with dispersion of melanin pigment, as well as inhibiting something called cyclooxygenase, an enzyme that is, it plays a role in inflammation in the skin. I've said this before, anything that drives inflammation in the skin can worsen hyperpigmentation, especially if you have a deeper skin tone. This also has the antioxidant glutathione, which may cut down on oxidative stress that could further aggravate hyperpigmentation. It has a variety of botanic extracts, which for me, I've been getting along well with, obviously, because I continue to repurchase this. But I will point out that any time you have a lot of botanic extracts, you have to be careful. It can increase the chances that you develop irritation from a product. And again, anything that's irritating, inflammatory to your skin, can aggravate hyperpigmentation. This product is one that for me, I see visible changes, visible improvement, and overall just brightening effect. And I have a video explaining what the term brightening means. It basically is just kind of evening out and enhancing your own background skin tone. But I do notice an overall improvement in skin luminosity and radiance above and beyond what I see when I just simply use a hydrating serum. Like I get improvement in skin luminosity, say using snail mucin, which is another love of my life, but I would say I get a little bit more of an improvement with this product above and beyond. So it, it definitely extends beyond the hydrating properties. You know, a few years ago, I fell in love with it's Skin LI Effector, and then they changed the formula. It's not as good anymore. The results I was getting from that It's Skin LI Effector before they changed it is what I'm getting with May Love. So it's replaced that for me. How do you use the May Love Fade Away Brightening Serum? You can use it one to two times a day. 
You wanna apply it to the skin after cleansing. While the skin's a little bit damp, that way you get better penetration of the active ingredients, unless you find that that burns and stings, at which case you might wanna wait until the skin has dried. You need a full dropper full, a dropper vial full, um, to cover the face, the neck. You can apply another moisturizer on top if you want. Honestly, I find this product pretty hydrating by itself and oftentimes I don't even need a separate moisturizer. You can apply it in the morning as well as in the evening. When you use it in the morning, allow it to absorb fully, allow it to completely dry, and then put sunscreen on. The reason for that is that if the skin is still a bit damp and you try and put sunscreen on to damp skin, it can get in the way of its ability to set up. Speaking of skin firmness, I've talked about this product so much this year. It's definitely gonna make its way into my best of 2023 series, which stay tuned, that will be coming throughout December, but Gold Bonds Age Renew Retinol Face and Body. You can use it on the face, I don't, because I already use Tretinoin on my face, so I don't wanna have redundancy with topical vitamin A, because that can be irritating, but I do use it on my body. I've repurchased it multiple times this year. The retinol can help in lightening sunspots. It also can help improve the appearance of sun damage and improve skin texture. This formula also has urea, one of my favorite ingredients in moisturizers. It's very hydrating. I mean, it's part of your skin's natural moisturizing factors and how your skin holds onto water, which is super important for how the barrier performs and, and maintains itself when the water content drops in the outermost layers of the skin. Things slow down and that's why you get a dry, rough skin. With urea in there, it helps to replenish moisture and it also softens and gently exfoliates rough, dull skin texture. This is a fantastic product to use on dry, rough elbows and knees for brightening up the skin on those areas, especially if you deal with a lot of skin thickening related to friction and chronic pressure. Palmetto oil hexapeptide 12 is a peptide that allegedly is going to improve skin firmness. It's basically a fragment from something called elastin in our skin. When it comes to peptides, they likely work in many cases by improving the moisture content of the top layers of the skin. This also has jojoba seed oil, an emollient, and it has ceramides, which are very important for the health of your moisture barrier and for keeping everything hydrated and moving along accordingly. And it's fragrance free. Yeah, Gold Bond overall, I've tried out several of their products this year and I have been really impressed. Like they have a sensitive line, their eczema line is excellent and the Gold Bond Pure line is not to be slept on. It likewise has urea in it. So if you're looking for a moisturizer that might lead to similar benefits in terms of improving dryness and rough skin texture but you don't wanna use retinol, check out the Pure line. It's really, really good. The Tree Hut Shave Oil. Now, when it comes to shaving, it's really important to use either a shave cream, a shave gel, some sort of barrier between your skin and the razor to cut down on nicks, to cut down on ingrown hairs, as well as to cut down on post-shave irritation, and to get a better shave. Helps to hydrate up the hair, it's easier to cut. And my whole thing though with shave creams and shave gels is they can often be kind of messy and unwieldy to use in the shower. So I have been really happy with the Tree Hut Shave Oil because it is a product that has a variety of different oils in it, but it actually goes on your skin pretty easily and stays in place while you're shaving. It doesn't gum up the razor, it doesn't get all over the shower, but then it efficiently rinses off the skin. The fragrance in these products is actually very nice. It's there while you're showering, shaving your legs or whatever. After you rinse it off, the scent does not linger. My favorite is the watermelon scent. It has grapeseed oil, jojoba seed oil, sunflower seed oil, allantoin. So these different oils may also provide some anti-inflammatory compounds, although take that with a grain of salt because oils are highly variable. If you are allergic to fragrance, this is not one to use, but I'm telling you, I've been really happy actually with Tree Hut. It's not just an overhyped TikTok phenomenon. I really do think that their body washes, which I've tried, and the shave oil, they really are effective products. I've also tried their moisturizers. You know, I really prefer to avoid scented moisturizers, but honestly, the formulas are really good. Speaking of moisturizers, you guys are gonna yawn at this next one, but honestly, like, I really just cannot, I feel like this is something that people need to really 
appreciate the full scope, the full breadth of benefits. And that is honestly plain petroleum jelly, plain petrolatum ointment. I use it so much. And this year, not only have I used it a lot like I always do for my lips, for eyelids, but I have really, really been loving it for my nails because Petroleum jelly helps to protect the junction between your nail plate and the what's called the proximal nail fold. Right there, you have a little overhang of skin. It's called the cuticle, a lot of people refer to it as, but that can get agitated. If you have hand eczema, atopic dermatitis, you can get a lot of inflammation that kind of creates a space there. If you trim your cuticles, it can open that up and basically, basically moisture can get in as well as microbes. That can lead to ridging, plus just a lot of roughness around the nails, which frustrates people. Using plain petroleum jelly has really helped to keep my nails super healthy and strong not getting those little ridges, because I do get those from time to time related to my atopic dermatitis. So that has really changed the game for me. And I can't say enough good things about plain petroleum jelly for dry cracked hands. The other scenario where I have really been using it a lot and thinking to myself, I have been under using petroleum jelly is on my feet. And I've always said, put petroleum jelly on your feet. I have a lot of videos telling you guys to do that. But I really, really, really took it very seriously this year because I work out, I run, I go on walks. That is a lot of repetitive friction on the skin in the setting of sweat. I find using petroleum jelly, um, it helps to lubricate the skin surface and really cut down on callus formation. And I, I highly recommend doing that. That along with making sure you have shoes that fit you well, your, your socks are dry, you're not you know, hanging out in the sweaty socks, that moisture really aggravates cracking and, and callus formation. But you lean into the petroleum jelly. And I have actually gotten to the point where I am just now in the habit of applying it to my feet at night before bed, of course, but I also put it on again when I wake up in the morning and change to whatever socks I'm gonna wear for the day. And you would not believe how much smoother my feet are overall. It has made such a huge difference. People will say, what about Aquaphor? What about CeraVe Healing Ointment? Those are all great options too, and will get you to the same place. The main difference between those and plain petroleum jelly is that those have other ingredients in them. The other ingredients, some people become allergic to, and then the ointment becomes a problem. For that reason, plain petroleum jelly is always the default recommendation as the safe option for people dealing with dry cracked lips. I mean, any skin problem where petroleum jelly is going to be the recommendation because it, it really, you can't, it's almost unheard of to develop a true allergy to petroleum jelly. You can develop an irritation to it, um, but it's not something that your immune system is going to become sensitized against. That being said, um, I have used this year a lot, actually, um, the Up and Up brand's version of Aquaphor, because I bought it to review for you guys in the Up and Up video, and I've ended up using that a lot. I keep it on the side of my bed. I also like to use it on my hands a lot, so I, I, I do use those. I use them a lot. The other one I purchased this year and I've used a lot is um, similar to plain petroleum jelly, but has a few more ingredients in it. It's called Elastoplast. That is another great petroleum-based ointment. I think it's sold in Australia in like the first aid section. That's a great product as well. But by and large, I have really, really, really been a petroleum jelly fanatic this year. Can't say enough good things about it. It's great for healing cuts. You know, if you get a cut, a scrape, just wash it out with some dilute soapy water and then apply petroleum jelly. It is the best thing for healing wounds because it keeps the wound bed moist. A lot of people are under the misconception that you need to dry out the wound bed to prevent bacteria from getting in there. And that is actually the opposite. You want a moist clean wound bed because that allows for the skin cells to migrate in properly to heal the wound. If you dry it out, they can't do that and you actually do end up getting a bacterial biofilm from chronic poor healing wounds. So petroleum jelly can cut down on 
the colonization of the wound by bacteria by serving as a mechanical barrier, and it keeps the wound bed moist so that the new healthy skin cells can migrate in. And petroleum jelly is super duper safe. I have a whole video about the safety of petroleum jelly. There is a lot of fear mongering. People believe that it is toxic. It has been around for so, so many years. It is so widely used in medicine. If God forbid you end up with a burn and you end up in the emergency room, the hospital, they're gonna be using petroleum jelly on your skin, period, point blank. Um, whether it be a petroleum jelly impregnated gauze, a topical ointment that is in petroleum jelly. All right, y'all, those are the five most reused, repurchased products of this year. Get excited though for my best of 2023 series. It's gonna be coming your way throughout the December months. We're gonna do a best of Korean skincare, as I always do, best sunscreens, best budget-friendly, affordable products. I mean, gosh, I've really gotta start narrowing that down because like I said, this year has been a win for affordable products and I'm really excited to get that round up for you guys. Anyway, don't forget to check out Sleeping Glow's Omnia Pillow. Thank you so much, Sleeping Glow, for sponsoring today's video. If you guys liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.